click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have discussed about the structure of bromine trifluoride and now in this topic we are going to talk about the structure of intrahalogen compounds. So what are those? Let me talk about that with the help of an example in this topic. So friends, in this topic we are going to talk about the structure of intrahalogen compounds. So starting with the first one that is, suppose if we are discussing about X, X-3. So in this case, the central atom that is what we understand that is this X while the rest of the group that are being associated with this X is nothing but X dash. So therefore, there are three X dash groups that would be attached to this X. So talking about the example like suppose if we talk about like ClF3. So this is what we had discussed in the previous lecture also. In the previous lecture also that is in the form of that is BF3. But uh, now let me discuss about this. So if we talk about the central atom. So in that case, we'll get to know that is for ground state. So this is what I'm discussing about that is for ground state we understand that is there are the orbitals those are nothing but ns, np and this is nd. So for halogen we understand that is the general electronic configuration or the valence shell has an electronic configuration which has basically ns2 and this one would be np5. So having one two, three, four and five electrons and the d orbital will not consist of any electron in the ground state. So this is what I have mentioned. But the thing is we are discussing about that is there should be three other halogen atoms that should be connected or that should be attached to this X. So this is what I am discussing about ground state of that is X. So in this case we have only one unpaired electron so for that we need basically three unpaired electrons so as to accommodate this x dash that is three x dash so that's the reason that is what we are going to do is we will excite it so therefore in the excitation state we'll get to know that is one of the electron will be moving towards the d orbital and this is basically the empty d orbital so in that case what we could get is we could get that is two electrons that would be on that is in the ns orbital while here as we can see that is there is only one unpaired electron so because of the shifting of this electron so this electron will be shifted to one of the d orbital and that is how basically we can obtain three unpaired electrons and this are the two lone pair of electrons so because of which we could get a hybridization and obviously by hybridization of this orbitals we could get that is s P3 dehybridization of the central atom and this will give a structure or this will give us a geometry which is known as trigonal bipyramidal and that is how basically we could get a structure but the thing is we are concerned about that is x x dash 3 so in that case basically the three unpaired electrons which are of x and on this basically three x dash atoms will occupy here but where does they will occupy so therefore this is what a similar example that is what we have discussed in the our earlier lecture but now let me give the structure with the help of an example like clf3 so in that case we'll get to know that is suppose if we concern about the cl as a center atom so that's the reason that is the equatorial position it will be occupied by basically the lone pair of electrons and this lone pair of electrons is nothing but I'm talking about this NS and this NP orbital. So therefore this are NS and the lone pair of electrons that is what we have discussed that is this is what I'm going to talk about the central atom that has undergone through a hybridization and one of the valency it would be satisfied by a fluorine atom while the rest of it would be fluorine so therefore this are the positions where we can see that is there are this is a bond that has been formed because of the unpaired electron that was basically for the central atom and that is how basically a sigma bond has been formed and the rest of the two that is lone pair of electrons they are here so thereby obviously there will be a repulsion between this lone pair and this bond pair and thereby the bond angle which should be basically 90 degree it will be reduced to it will, be, it will be reduced to 87 degree 29 minutes i talking about the bond length so it has been found that is the bond length between the that is chlorine and fluorine it has been found to be that is 1.68 armstrong so therefore this is what we can find that the structure is basically a bend shape or bend e shape structure 
and this is what I want to discuss about. And these are the two lone pair of electrons that will be on the center letter. So therefore, this is the structure, and this was the first example. And now let me discuss about the second one. So where is the second that is I'm going to talk about is basically x x dash five. So in this case, the central atom is nothing but it is x. So therefore, for the ground state of x, we'll have the valence electronic configuration that would be nothing but it would be that is ns np and again nd. So in this case, the central atom will consist of that is two electrons in its valence that is in ns orbital and five electron in the np subshell and there is no electron in this d orbital. But the thing is we have to occupy five x dash atoms and that's the reason we have only right here we have only one unpaired electron so that's the reason we need basically five vacant orbitals which are basically half fit so that's the reason what we are going to do is we have to excite these electrons and that's the reason that is on excitation where we could find that is one of the electron that is this is a paired one so one of the electron it will shift towards the d orbital but here then we'll get that is three unpaired electrons but by shifting this electron also to here so that's the reason that we'll get five unpaired electrons and those five unpaired electrons will be very much responsible to take this five x dash atoms and that is how basically it will undergo through hybridization as well as it will give a particular structure so for that so this is what i'm going to talk about that is this pair it will be as it is while talking about this electron this electron will be shifted to one of the d orbital and even this electron will be shifted to one of the d orbital so here basically there is only one electron that is been remaining and here also there is one electron remaining and this one is as it is so therefore we have got basically one two three four five five unpaired electrons and that is how basically it will occupy five x dash atoms and that is how we see if the central atom undergoes through a hybridization process so therefore the hybridization is nothing but S P three D two. So whenever a central atom undergoes through an hybridization of S P three D two, then the structure or then the geometry of that molecule it should be basically square planar bipyramidal, and that is what I'm going to talk about the example related to this one. And now let me take an example like X F five. So suppose if we consider the example that is X F five, so in that case we'll get to know that is X will be the central atom, and talking about the five that is fluorine atoms so therefore out of which we see four will be on the plane and this is what this are on the plane and okay about the next one that is the rest of the two valency or the rest of the two that is hybrid orbitals so in that case we'll get to know that is one of the hybrid orbital will be responsible for formation of the bond between the fifth fluorine and talking about the rest of the thing that is as we can see over here that is lone pair of electrons so therefore this lone pair of electron will be below the plane so therefore this will be below the plane so this is the structure and this structure is planar pyramidal and this is what i want to discuss about the second one and now let me discuss about the last one so suppose if we consider the example that is xf5 so in this case we will get to know that is the central atom is nothing but x that would be an halogen atom and the rest of the halogen atoms that is i'm talking about fluorine so it would be four fluorine atoms would be on the plane making a particular angle of that is you could say 90 degree 90 degree and so on and the rest of the hybrid orbitals that is of the central atom we'll get to know that is one of the hybrid orbital of the central atom it will occupy or it will form a bond with the fifth fluorine atom while the rest of the hybrid orbital that is what we have that is if i talk about that is this lone pair of electrons so therefore even that will be present over here that is what 
it is present that is below the plane so therefore instead of formation of a geometry that is square planar by pyramidal so that is basically we can see a square planar pyramidal structure so therefore this was the second example and now let me discuss about the next one so the next that is i'm going to talk about the structure is for x x dash seven so in this case even this is very much similar to that of what we have discussed in the previous one that is suppose if we consider that is ground state for the valence shell of that is the central atom and in this case it is a halogen so that's the reason that we could find that is ns np and nd would be that is the valence shell and for that we have got to know that is two electrons it will be in the s subshell there will be five electrons in p subshell and there is no electrons in B subshell whenever we are concerned about that is ground state so here basically we need seven x dash atoms so for that we have only right here we have only one unpaired electron so set so that's the reason that we have to shift all the electrons that is there are basically paired so we have to shift each of the electrons from the paired one to the orbital and that is what we can obtain seven unpaired electrons and those seven unpaired electrons will be very much responsible to occupy that is this x dash atoms and that is how basically the bond formation will take place so in that case suppose after acceleration acceleration of electrons of the central atom that is x so in that case we'll get to know that is this paired electron will turn into unpaired electron while the electron of that has been shifted to one of the p orbital so talking about here that is for p this electron is as it is and this electron it will be shifted to d orbital and here it will be only one electron left and here also one electron it will be shifted to d orbital having that is one electron in this p orbital so this all the orbitals it will undergo through hybridization process and this is what we have got to know that is this is s p3 b3 hybridization is what if the central atom will undergo through so s p3 d3 is the hybridization that the central atom will go through and this is what it will give a particular structure and that particular structure is nothing but pentagonal bipyramidal and this is what i want to talk about with the help of an example suppose if i am considering the example that is i f7 so in that case the iodine atom is the central atom and talking about the rest of the thing that is the rest of the fluorine atoms so out of which five fluorine atoms it will be on the plane making a structure like pentagon which is on the plane so this is what a structure it forms it forms like a pentagon and talking about the rest of the two fluorine atoms so those fluorine atoms will be below the plane and one will be above the plane so this is what the structure of the interhalogen compounds that is what i have discussed over here so that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope you will share this video with your friends and yes don't forget to subscribe you can channel thank you so much